Star Citizen has a rather shallow multi-crew experience for larger ships at the moment, and big portions of the game's mechanics are still being developed. It's in alpha after all, but Cloud Imperium now are working on possibly what is the most important feature of Star Citizen outside server meshing, the resource management system. Cloud Imperium have a working prototype for this currently and are starting to build it into all systems in the game. And we learned about it at this year's 2952 CitizenCon in the PowerPlay presentation. Resource management systems allow for the movement and use of fuel, energy, coolant and even information to transfer between ship systems. It powers the ships, makes them all work. It connects components, power and their controls. It's used by vehicles, ships, structures and stations. They're currently focused on getting it functional with the Hammerhead, Hull A and Star Runner. It will drastically increase the time to kill of ships. This will also see ships regularly disabled rather than destroyed. Then you might be able to board them or salvage them or take the components off them without everything just going. You're going to be able to cut power to buildings and ships. So the Siege of Orison, for example, may well change massively when you're able to cut the power to a building or the AA turrets. It's also going to make things like base building possible, but most excitingly, damage control, engineering and true multi-crew, that is what it's going to allow for. So the system allows for massive capital ships like the Idris and Javelin to actually work properly in the verse and actually be able to get into our hands. The system is broken up into multiple parts. Power, energy and resources. So this is energy, coolant and fuel moving around the ship. You're going to be able to overload items so you can make them work better um, potentially for a short period of time, though it can damage them or uses a lot of resources. You can unload items to save on resources, but again, it, they may be less efficient. There's life support. This is probably the most important system on your ship. Atmosphere is finite and produces your oxygen. You're going to need to make sure it's powered and working and its subcomponents are maintained so that it's scrubbing the, the air appropriately. Item maintenance. You're going to be able to turn items on and off. You'll be able to change subcomponents. You'll be able to replace fuses, relay handling and engineering. So this is the circuitry of the ship. You can reroute power and it connects all the systems together. So you might be running lots of these little power relays around the ship that connect all the components together. Um, some of them might get damaged or destroyed. You might have to reroute the power. You don't have to run them all at the same time if you don't want to because they actually consume some power. Access control. This gives roles and permissions to your crew members. So you can define exactly what a gunner is and say you, Joe Bloggs, have access to this turret and your crew quarters and these doors in between them and the toilet and that sort of stuff. You are a gunner, but that's all you have access to. You don't have access to use the terminals in the cockpit. You don't have the access to sort of like the, the pilot's chair. This division of permissions and labor is incredibly important. Gravity. There will be gravity generators on larger ships that can be turned on and off and it will save energy turning them off. But obviously you may be running around and um, doing stuff in your cargo bay and the gravity generator might get damaged or disabled and that will turn off the gravity on your ship. They currently have working prototypes for power, life support, gravity and relays at the moment. Though it's not finished yet for these, the systems allow for the moving of resources, the generation of life support, fire expulsion, so fires can start on ships and this affects atmosphere, so it will burn oxygen, it can obviously affect temperature, it can make you overheat. Um, temperature changes are also something that you can change on life support systems. Suffocation is the thing that will happen when areas are overpopulated because the um, sort of oxygen generation of a room in an area is finite. And if you have too many people using it in an area too quickly, they will suffocate. Air and atmosphere movement between rooms is simulated. Gravity on and off and low all works and they've got relay and power distribution. So that's what's working or prototyped at the moment. What's next for Cloud Imperium to build out with this feature to get it in our hands? Well, there's a few things. Interactable and accessible items on ships, relay gameplay, changing fuses on the relays, resource balancing, defining control groups that will be accessible through multifunction displays, allowing people to create presets for your resource network, an engineering UI with at least a list or schematic view of your ship, external engineering screens, the ability for engineers to define the tuning parameters that can be accessed by the pilot at the press of a button. So after the initial release of 
that system, the resource management system. They will then evolve the system and hopefully everything will fit into place. The systems here are going to give you much more control than ever before on your ships. Defining roles for players, having engineers focusing on repairing components, putting out fires, replacing fuses, rerouting power. Ships oxygen will deplete if there's too many characters on board for a long time. But having physicalized components that communicate with each other and transfer power, resources between them makes for some fantastic gameplay. I said earlier that it was probably your life support system that's the most important, but I suppose it's your power system, your, your power plants, and then your life support system. I wonder if we'll be able to get sub-components that will allow for like battery backups. So you go, well, actually this has just got like an emergency battery on um, in the life support generator, I've put some sub-components in that will allow it to um, survive for a few minutes without power. I'm just really excited for physicalized components and uh, for those physical components to be changed actually sort of affect what's going on on the ship, for them to be damaged, for their network to be disrupted. It's fantastic gameplay and unlocks a huge portion of what Star Citizen is intended to be. Clan Imperium expects some of this to be ready next year, but let's wait and see how the development goes. It is a big focus for them, but just like fires here, I've been burnt before. Boom! A pun! That's it for your summary of CitizenCon's Power Play presentation. I think it's genuinely what I'm most excited about feature-wise currently. But what about you? Do you like the systems here? Are you excited for the ability to take out individual components or disable part of a ship's circuit? How is this going to affect when you're sort of doing combat uh, with a ship? Are you going to be trying to target individual sort of components off capital ships? And when you're attacking, you might be causing sort of fires on board ships, things like that. Is that going to be a tactic? Are there going to be sort of potentially types of munitions that are more likely to cause fire on ship? And that's what actually what you're shooting for, pew, 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 trying to take out their um, sort of oxygen supply, trying to take out their life support systems and uh, just cause havoc. Are you concerned about running out of oxygen? Does it seem overly complex or unnecessary, these systems? When do you think we might see it in our hands? Whatever your thoughts, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Nordcon 2952, the road to Nord 4.0. What do you want out of nordvpn.com slash boardgamer? Nord base building? Nord hunting 2.0? A dynamic Nordonomy? I'm personally looking forward to the latest Nord Cruiser. In the meantime, I'm going to make do with NordVPN protecting my data from insidious space pirates and giving me unrivaled access to all the content that the internet has to offer. Use the links below. Note NordCon 2952 does not actually exist. Also adding to my shell pile, Toby Eye Tracker 5 gives you precise head tracking and control with your eyes. That's the sound of my eyes controlling the lasers giving you unprecedented immersion in Star Citizen. You can basically aim lasers with your eyes. Pew, pew! Use the links below and code BOARDGAMER for discount. Every month we have a ship giveaway for Star Citizen. For October, we're giving away a Cutlass Black with pirate skin, lifetime insurance, and Star Citizen game package. All you need to jump into the game. Just comment on any of my videos made during October to be in for a chance of winning that. If you would like to further support the channel, please consider becoming a channel member with the join button below my videos or potentially becoming a Patreon. You'll get access to some exclusive content and it really helps the channel out. Thank you so much for watching and supporting the channel. Hopefully I'll see you in the next video and have a great October.